if you've been struggling with landscapes, then this video might help. Hello and welcome to Google Earth, where I've been spending a lot of my time these days now that we can't go outside as much as we used to. If you don't know, I'm currently painting every single country in alphabetical order using Google Earth. Landscape painting is all about creating a sense of depth. Paintings are obviously generally created on a 2D surface and it's the painter's and the artist's job to trick the viewer into thinking that they're looking at a 3D scene when they're actually just looking at a flat 2D surface. So when you look at a scene, how can you tell the difference between something that's close to you or something that's far away? It might seem like a simple question, but it's something that you need to really, really consider when you're doing a landscape painting. And it's something that we often take for granted because we're used to seeing things with depth. So it's almost easy to ignore this idea and this concept, but it's something that's really, really important. So there are quite a few ways that you can achieve a sense of depth in your paintings, and I will be covering five of them today. And they will be detail, working from back to front, colour, contrast and perspective. I'll be adding some chapters into this video so if you want to skip to a particular point then you can just click along the bottom and skip to that section. So the first thing to think about when you want to achieve a sense of depth is the amount of detail that you're putting into any particular part of the painting. So more specifically adding more details as you move towards the front and towards the area of the painting that is closest to the viewer and to the artist I guess. It might sound obvious, but the closer you are to something, the more detail you can see. So you want to save your most intricate details for an area that's closer to the viewer. And generally the background should be simpler or at least less obvious details. With watercolour, you can do this by using more of a wet in wet technique towards the back and then using more dry brushwork towards the front. And you can achieve a similar thing with oils or acrylics by blending a little more towards the back and then adding more details and more strong lines and more defined shapes towards the front. The next point is to work back to front, top to bottom. So this is quite a general rule and there will obviously always be exceptions to pretty much all of these rules, but generally you'll want to start the painting from the point in the landscape that is the furthest back, which is usually the sky. And then as you continue to paint, you'll move further and further forward in the landscape. This means that you'll pretty much always be layering the foreground over the background, which obviously is kind of how your eye sees it and it almost just makes intuitive sense to do it that way. If you think about it logically, there's no point painting a tree and then trying to fit the sky in around the tree and the gaps in the leaves. Basically, if you just can paint whatever's in the background first and move forward, then you'll never have that issue. This also ties into the first point around detail and you'll want to be adding more and more detail as you get further towards the front. Obviously, these are not hard and fast rules and there will always be exceptions, but generally, especially when you're just starting out, I think that's a good way around to work. The next point is around colour and generally when you look at a landscape you'll notice that things that are further back appear cooler and things that are further forward appear more yellow. The way that I just think of it in my head in the simplest way possible is essentially cooler towards the back, warmer towards the front. So in a lot of my paintings that comes across as for example if I'm doing a mountain scene the mountains in the background will be either more purple or more blue. And then as you come forward, you start to introduce more of those yellows and then things can turn a bit more green. And this effect is more typical when you're looking at a scene where you've got something really far away and then something a bit closer. So mountains are a good example of that. And again, not to be constantly repeating this point, but these are all general rules and they're not always true. So it's all about observation and just making sure that you're looking at the scene as you're painting it and just trying to see, is this cooler, is this warmer? Which part of the painting has the cooler section, which part has the warmer section? And just making sure that when you're mixing your paint, you're aware of that. The next point is to save your contrast for the most interesting parts of the painting. So contrast can be anything from a contrast of color, a contrast between hard edges and soft edges. It can be a contrast of texture. There are lots of ways to get contrast into your paintings. But just know when you're painting that the areas that do have the most contrast 
will draw the viewer's eye to that spot. You can see a lot of great examples of this in the landscapes of Joseph Zabukvich, who I've talked about before on this channel. He's one of my favorite watercolor painters and he always knows how to draw your eye into a particular area in the painting. And the final point is to get to grips with perspective. Perspective is a massive topic and it can seem quite overwhelming. And I know I personally was quite intimidated by learning perspective when I first started reading up on it. It just seemed like there was so much to learn and it just seemed very overwhelming. But once I started to realize that perspective is all about your eye line, that really helped. And I also never even realized that the eye line is the same as the horizon line. You might have seen my TikTok video that explains a little bit about this when it comes to drawing crowds and people. To draw people in perspective, use this one simple trick. No matter how near or far they are, draw everyone's head on the same level. This works because your eye line is roughly the same as their eye line. But remember to draw children below your eye line because they're below your eye line in real life. And interestingly, this photo that I recently used for one of my paintings shows this idea really well and it might be helpful to understanding perspective more generally. So this is a photo taken on a boat. The person who took it, you can see, is either standing up or is holding the camera up higher than the people's heads on the boat because you can see that it's looking down on their heads. So that's a really good way to understand this whole horizon line and headline and eyeline situation because if he was sitting down then the people on the boat's eyeline would be the same as the horizon line because he would be sitting down and he would be at the same eyeline as the people on the boat if that makes sense. So if we turn the scene around you can see that the same is true on this other boat over here and the people's heads are just ever so slightly below the horizon line. When I first saw this photo, I was a bit confused because I thought if the person is also sitting on a boat, how come the heads don't line up with the eye line? But it's just because he's standing up or is holding the camera up a little bit higher than everyone's heads. So it's just having these thoughts and just being aware of these things when you're painting. It can be something that, especially when you're first starting, you, you, you just don't really think about. And once you start to learn a bit more about perspective, you can start to spot all these patterns and all these things that you just wouldn't have noticed before. And it can really help to inform when you're drawing, getting things more accurate because you know that they follow certain rules. I don't have time to go into a lot more about perspective here. Let me know if you want a whole video on everything I've learned about perspective. I'm again, still not perfect with it and I do make mistakes sometimes, but it just really helps having that knowledge and understanding just a little bit about how perspective works when you're drawing. And it's helpful even on scenes like this, which, you know, it's, it's quite a landscape scene. There's not much architecture, but it still came in handy because I was thinking about the people's heads, where they were on the horizon line and things like that. And it really just helped me understand the scene a lot more. So there are five things to think about when you're painting landscapes. Even if you just think about them while you're painting, you'll find that you're almost sub consciously just start adding them into your work without really even noticing it. So hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and you can just leave that in the comments and I'll get back to you. But for now, I'm going to go and paint a few more countries. I am posting new videos every Sunday. So if you like this one, give it a like and subscribe to get more videos in your inbox every week. But for now, I'll see you in the next one.